so the actual session, so this took, I mean, this took a few months to get everything arranged. And then the actual session, what I remember about it most is that David's lying down on his back in this claustrophobic room, which is intermittently very, very noisy with his earplugs in. And we're out there kind of drinking coffee and talking. We're just ignoring <laughs> him. <laughs> and it was two and a half hours. And we first got out, I thought we wanted, he'd want to see these images when he got out after two and a half hours. But the first thing he said was, is there a bathroom here? <laughs> yeah, I made sure to use it before I went in, but I knew two and a half hours would be. Uh... But he was, but he was um, very consistent. I, and I can, I can say, because we got different images by, from different planes of, and, and the, the static images and the real-time images of the same pitches, and they're all very consistent. So it, it reinforced my belief that we got a meaningful thing. Great. A limitation, of course, is that we got David, and if somebody else moved their vocal track in a different way for the same pitch, probably not. But there got to be some differences according sure. to your own anatomy. Yeah, and a lot of it just gets down to the, you know, the, the fact of time, money, getting experts in there, and 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 in the the end result is uh, uh, maybe not a subject that could change the face of mankind and warrant all that time and money. So we're happy to be able to just get me in there, but that definitely would be a good good next step is to get image other experts on the harmonica. But uh, I feel that it's pretty representa uh, representative of, of what what yeah. most people would be too. So I'm in there doing it, and you tried different uh, types of scans. You experimented for about the first half hour. So there was some experimentation uh, that we had tried different settings. I don't know that that was Lewis and Andrew doing this and until we got the best settings. That that made it long. If we were doing it again, it would go much. It would go much faster. Mm -hmm. And, and we would, you were making some... detailed notes as we were going through. This image is of this of this bend on this harmonica. This. We didn't just do uh, tongue block bending, we also did a pucker bending. So our two prominent embouchures used in the harmonica world were representative, and we didn't just do draw bending, but did blow bending as well. So I think we did a pretty good job of covering the bases. So after all these images were done, we then used a software to be able to view these images and all the different sections. And what was your, what were you impressed of, or what images did you see, I guess, twofold? One, the images that you expected to see, and maybe some of the things that you were kind of surprised with. Well, it was all very interesting, because I would just never seen anything like this. Uh, one thing that struck me is how big the tongue is. I'm sure the whole vocal tract is important, but I'm sure also that the tongue is the most important, because clearly it's the one that flexes around most, and the, the muscles in your pharynx, around your throat, uh, do something, but, but not as much. The tongue is just, it's big, it's a very complex muscle. Uh, that's been studied and there, there are many different muscles with great nervous system in the tongue, so it can do a wide range of subtle, subtle movements. But you have to train it. It's not what you learned when you're a child, you're just speaking. I think you have to train yourself and that's, I'm sure that's an issue. The other thing I learned, I saw is that, w I know that, we all knew that when you try to pitch bend, the tongue goes up near the roof of your mouth. I didn't know how close it comes. When you see the mid-sagittal plane, which means a cut right through the center of my head going, going this way, it shows that the tongue is not touching the, top, the roof of your mouth, the palate. However, when you look at a section like this, called the coronal plane, you see that the tongue is touching the palate, blocking off all the air except for a little groove right in the center of your tongue. And at the narrowest point, the um, the area of that groove is less than a square centimeter. And that's, that, that uh, is, is clearly essential in, in making these pitch bends. The other thing we saw is, which confirmed what you'd said before, that when you have a little pitch bend, you have, uh, let me back up a little bit there, the, mm -hmm. this tongue coming up forms a cavity in front of the tongue, toward the lips and toward the harmonica, and one that's toward the back, toward your vocal cord and your lungs. The cavity that's in the front is smaller than the one in the back, and it changes its volume. When David told, tells me to pull your tongue back a little bit to deepen the pitch, well, it's making that anterior or the front cavity larger, and that's probably, probably important, and we can see that in three dimensions. Uh, the next step is be to make a model of that and really know how how big it is.
Mm -hmm. And model of the actual volume of the mouth. Yeah, that's another. That's another. That's another issue. Um, so they're the main main things I saw. You probably saw different things that were interesting to you. I I saw what I expected to see, which was I was happy about uh -huh. what I feel is happening inside of my mouth, and I've having the opportunity to work with students for a quarter of a century now and helping them in the bending process this visual, visual image in my mind of what my tongue is doing and what their tongue is doing in respect to what I'm hearing tonally and also sometimes you can see a little bit of musculature happening outside the face but mostly hearing generally speaking I saw what I expected to see one the interesting things that I did come across in the images that I wasn't so cognizant of when in the bending process was the scooping of the tongue a little bit more. We mm -hmm. think of the tongue, that, that constriction point making the anterior chamber larger if the harmonic is here and the tongue humps up, that it rocks back more using the back of the tongue so you have a larger chamber, which definitely did happen, but also the front of the tongue created a little bit more of a scooping effect, mm -hmm. which also enlarged the uh, chamber. So that was a, kind of a, a new thing for me. I also expected to see more openness behind the constriction spot. In my mind, good tone is produced by constricting in that one spot, but trying to open up the gullet beyond, behind mm -hmm. that constriction spot, the posterior chamber. And of course, the anterior chamber in front of the constriction point is, is primarily responsible for pitch bending. But I did notice there really wasn't much opening at all behind the actual constriction point. I kind of envisioned the more openness mm -hmm. there having to do with tone production because when the tongue is down, it sure does have to do with the difference in, yeah. in tone production. And there may, be some, there, there may be something in the pharynx. The pharynx, and there I'm referring to this vertical part above uh, the vocal folds, has muscles all around it. And they can contract and release a lot. That's known from other literature. Not, not having to do with music playing. Um, and, and we didn't, did not get good images of that. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's also another step. If we got a third plane cutting through this, we'd see that better. So we can't be dogmatic about that. The other thing I want to mention that was very interesting to me was the difference between a pucker or lip blocking armature mm -hmm. and the tongue blocking armature. Uh, when you do the pucker or lip blocking, the tongue's right at the center and you're opening the mouth at the center. That's pretty obvious. When you do the lip blocking, I didn't have a good clear image on mind what happens, but the- The tongue we, blocking. I mean, sorry, the tongue, uh -huh. the tongue blocking. When you see the tongue, you see, we, in our image, we can see the tongue coming up and touching the teeth, mm -hmm. and we'd have just a little bit of opening between the right side of the lip and the right side of the tongue, mm -hmm. through which air passed through. About the size of a hole in the harmonica. Exactly. Uh -huh. and, but yet when you do some pitch bending, what happens? Well, once you go back two or three centimeters from the face of the harmonica, the tongue's centered right. Uh -huh. It's no longer asymmetric. So it's just up there where you're blocking it. The tongue somehow contorts to be able to do that so that that channel we talked about between the roof of the mouth and the top of the tongue is indeed centered when you get back a little bit. Yeah, so whether you're in the pucker bend process or tongue block bend process, the process is the same. It's just that the tongue is on the face of the harmonica, that the first, the frontal part of the tongue yeah. is on the face of the harmonica and the tongue block. And that's definitely something that uh, students have difficulty wrapping their minds around the fact that pucker bending and tongue block bending is uh, you're achieving the same goal. The challenge, the difference in the tongue block is that the, the thought process is the tongue already <coughs> inhabits the entire range of the mouth. So it's more about what part of the tongue humps up in that rolling or wave-like action to create a deeper bend. Three draw has to bend with a smaller chamber to a whole step bend, larger chamber, minor third bend. Where a pucker, you can go ahead and do your bend here and then you can move the whole tongue. So there's definitely a little bit, there is more mobility with the tongue. But the idea of the constricted air passage forward is the same idea. But the actual shape of the tongue and, and how it acts in the bending process, yeah, you can, especially when you look at the coronal viewpoint, it's it's all centered past that point. It is yeah. interesting to look at. Yeah.